Welcome back. This is part two of my timers for STM32 Duino tutorial. Um, I'll be using the same discovery kit, which is the STM32 F407 board. Uh, costs about £20. So um, this is the example I'll be using during this tutorial. Um, so counter modes, what are they? Um, there's about five or six counter modes that STM32 provides. Um, the first one is uh, like the up counter. This is the default. This is what I was using in the last tutorial. Um, so basically uh, the counter starts at zero and it ticks up all the way to the overflow value and then it resets. A new epoch starts and it starts at zero and then it ticks up again and resets. Um, then the second counter mode it starts at the kind of maximum value um, and then counts down to zero, resets back to that sort of maximum value and so on and so forth. And the third one, uh, center up down, this one's quite often used in things like motor control. Um, so this one starts at zero, counts up to the kind of maximum value. You get this kind of um, overflow event and then it counts back down to zero and you get an underflow event so um, yeah and the last one is kind of a variant on on the third really it's, it's the same counter mode but what I've done is, is I, I only want an uh, like an underflow event uh, so yeah this bit here is on my board I need to use particular pins to get at, at serial um, so I can do serial debugging um, next we've got four functions they're just basic functions but they're acting as callbacks or interrupts so these four later on we'll see that we we attach these four interrupts to to parts of the timer the first one's a kind of a timer scoped and the, the other three are kind of attached to channels within the timer so here's your channel one interrupt and then channel two interrupt channel three interrupt um, so these are going to fire uh, when the change register for channel you know for the respective channel um, is equal to the counter value. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So when channel one fires, um, I'm going to get there'll be a visual indication below um, uh, underscore showing you that it's kind of early on in the epoch or it's it's, it's a low counter value really, um, and I'll toggle the LED from on to off or off to on. Um, similar for channel two, this will be kind of mid-level and a high score sort, sort of thing. So here's the setup. We've got the standard pin modes to output. Um, I've covered these three in the um, the previous tutorial. Um, I won't say much about them um, other than uh, we're running at one hertz or one the timer resets once per second. Um, calling timer refresh here um, it's kind of advisable to do this when you after you change something like um, the prescaler or um, the compare uh, register um, I kind of it kind of, I think I think what it does is it basically immediately makes the registers take effect um, here I'm printing out it the time o'clock frequency the prescaler factor and the overflow so hopefully if you have a look at these you'll kind of start to work out how they relate you know basically you multiply this by this and it'll equal to that so you kind of usually you're working back the other way you're starting with a time o'clock frequency and then you try and work out a sensible prescaler and an overflow but as I said in the first one we don't do that we're just using this sort of handy function which which chooses a prescaler and an overflow for us so here the first function is being attached um, notice here the attach interrupt there's no kind of uh, one comma this is the channel ID so this this isn't at channel scope this is at time scoped so basically it's attaching a function which says every time this timer resets can you call this callback please and um, then we've got the three channel scoped interrupts are attached um, so if we're set in the mode to output compare and we're saying, can you call this interrupt when we are 25% of the way through our epoch, or 50% of the way through, or 75% of the way through? So um, that's 
basically how it works. Um, I'm going to initially I'm going to comment out this code. Uh, so what what will happen um, is uh, we will get it working just in counter up mode, the default mode first. So get an, get a visual um, idea of what's happening. So visually on on in the in the sort of terminal session you can see it going starting at low value for 25%, 50 75%, then the, the epoch resets and it starts again. And similarly, if you look at the LEDs there, we're basically going around in a circle. So the I think the um the green one was the reset, orange was channel one, etc. Um so yeah, um this is obviously not using that much um processing power because it's mostly you know, apart from these interrupts, um, none of the code is being invoked. Um, so I will now show you it working with all four modes, sort of cycling through all four modes. Um, I will upload that. So um, what this is doing is where we were, we're in counter mode up now. So it'll say counter mode down. So basically in this counter mode down section, we pause the timer, wait for two seconds. It's just to allow me and you to have a sort of a visual pause between the modes because otherwise it gets a bit confusing to see what, it, what it's doing. Um, we change the counter mode here um, to down. We set the count to the maximum value because we want to count start from the top and then tick our way down to zero. Um, here's the message being printed and then we resume the timer and then we're going to wait for four epochs to, to print themselves out above and then we'll move on to the, the next mode which is the counter mode uh, center up down. So this is pretty much the same, I'm setting the counter zero, um, I've called a refresher, I don't think it's required here but I, I have. Um, and the last one, this is where I wanted to, to get rid of that um, uh, overflow event and this is basically done by setting the repetition counter so normally the repetition counter is zero um, every time uh, so basically zero means can I have a reset event after every epoch if you set it to one then um, basically you're asking for it to have uh, an epoch so uh, uh, an event every other um, epoch and look if I set this to you know two then it'd be every third if it set it to three it'd be every fourth epoch um, so this kind of pattern here is again is quite use, useful in motor control and that's the sort of area that I enjoy working in so um, that's and then the last bit here is me sort of just setting it up for the next round so this is back to counter mode up again I obviously need to change this, the repetition counter back to its default of zero. So that's an explanation of um, setting up counter modes and um, also interrupts. In the next um, part of this tutorial, um, we'll be going through um, how to do kind of complementary timers um, or complementary channels, how to set them up, and with dead time as well. And this is kind of important if you've in, in motor control, for instance, um, it's really important that uh, sometimes that you, if you've got like a, a low and a high MOSFET, you can't have them both on at the same time. So in setting up, um, you, you need to swap between them. So this one will go high, then you wait for maybe 50 nanoseconds, and then you want the bottom one to go high. You want them both on at the same time, otherwise you get a short circuit. So. Um, yeah, we'll be talking about uh, complementary uh, channels in the next one. Thank you.